So we pick up a nice pot there and we also knock out a world champ, which was pretty, pretty sweet. I'm off to go and play some tennis tonight without my tennis shoes. I've got my hiking boots for this evening, my swim shorts. The only thing I'm wearing is my tennis top. I also do not have a racket and I also have six months worth of eating rubbish and doing no exercise. So this should be a fun, fun game of tennis. We'll see how it goes. Just finished our hit, dripping in sweat. As you can see, we're very fit. Yeah, very fit it's been a while. I look old. I look like I'm decrepit yeah. and about 65 it's, years old. It's like 60 minute game is aged, oh, Yeah, well, yeah. Six, we had 90 minutes on the court, but probably only played for about 45 because we spent most of it sat down here. I feel like I've been in a sauna for about two hours and probably going to sleep well tonight. Definitely going to need a shower. Alice, do you want to have a hug? <laughs> she doesn't want a hug. First time for tennis in about four months. Practicing for the hit with Andrew Nimi. Practicing for a tournament. Oh yeah, apparently there's a tournament as well. A tournament on Friday. <laughs> yeah. Next I'm gonna get hammered. Holding this camera up with my arm. Ooh, it's killing me. Okay, now to tell you about my time at the World Series. Of uh, it is a little bit loud in here. I'm gonna go find somewhere a little bit more quiet. Oh. Whew. Whew. Yeah, I think that's a bit better, but I still need to have a shower, so bear with me a second. Right, that's better. I'm nice and clean and ready to tell you my story about the World Series of Poker this year. Grab yourself a coffee, a beer, whatever it is that you drink, and sit down with me and enjoy this story. When I was in Vegas this year, I didn't know that I was going to become a vlogger. So unfortunately, I have very, very limited video footage. I do, however, have a lot of pictures that I'm going to share with you and try and tell you my story through that way. Me and Alice left Hong Kong at the end of May. She went back to the UK to visit friends and family whilst I traveled to Vegas for six weeks to play in the World Series of Poker. I was actually at Vegas the year before at the World Series of Poker but I didn't actually play any events. I was playing some cash games and I was also there for EDC, which is awesome, by the way. If you like electronic music, go to EDC. It was incredible. But this year I decided that I wanted to play about eight events I think I played, all sort of low stakes between $500 to $1,500. And it was my first real experience of playing a tournament festival. When I arrived in Vegas, the first bad beat of the trip already hit me. I arrived nice, safe, sound. However, my bag did not. 
Now, when you're a long-term traveler, your bag is your life. It had absolutely everything I needed in my bag. I went to the desk, they said they would contact me and I would get the bag in a few days, which wasn't ideal considering I had nothing on me. Anyway, the first night I stayed in a place called Ellis Island and I was meeting one of my future roommates there. I had rented a house with four other poker players, one of which I had met before, the year before, and the other three I didn't know. Mark, my roommate, he was the one that I stayed with in Ellis Island for one night before we checked into the house. It was quite late when we both arrived, so we didn't do much other than just go to sleep. The next day, however, he woke up, sat on the end of his bed, put on his headphones and started meditating. Damn. I was thinking, this guy is serious. He's a meditator. I'd done a little bit of meditation at drama school, but not a lot. And I was seriously impressed that he had this routine of meditating every morning, something that I'm trying to get into, something that I'm gonna release a vlog on in the near future. After he had finished his meditation, we went to go and get some great American food. And we went to the Ellis Island restaurant where Mark ordered possibly the biggest steak or slab of meat I've ever seen in my entire life. It was almost as big as my head. Surprisingly, he actually ate most of it. I couldn't believe that he could stomach that, like that slab of steak would have fed me for a week quite easily. After that, we went to see our house to check into our house for the month. We had booked it for the whole of June. It was a lovely house actually, it was huge. We had a swimming pool in the backyard. We had a foosball table that didn't work, which was a bit annoying. I had booked into the room to share with Mark because I was on a bit of a budget or still am on a bit of a budget traveling long-term and not having a full-time job. But either way, it was a really nice house and the housemates that I had there, they were great. We all got along really well. The house was only about 10 minutes away from the Rio and the Strip in an Uber. So that was quite good, but Obviously the expenses were adding up very quickly, getting an Uber there and back every day. I think in total I spent in six weeks in Vegas the same amount of money that I spent for the first six months of my traveling in Asia, just to give you an idea of how much money I spent. On day one, I decided to go and play a sit and go, which is a one table sit and go with 10 players around the table. You're playing for tournament tokens to use in the events. It was. $275, I think. I actually won the first one for $1,000, which I used towards some of my tournament entries, and it was a great way to start the trip having lost my bag. I'd recommend playing some of these sit and goes if you have a good idea of short stack poker. People really, really don't have a clue. You start with about 20 to 30 big blinds, depending on the entry level that you play. Too many people are limping and raise folding. You basically just need to wait for the first two, three levels and have a good push fold game and you'll definitely print money in those games. On to the first tournament that I played. The tournament that I played first was the Colossus. It was a $565 buy-in. I think they had like six or seven day ones. I can't even really remember, but it was a lot. And I think over 13,000 people entered this tournament. Very, very fast structure. It kind of lends more towards my poker game. I used to play a lot of turbo sit and goes online, so my short stacked poker game is very, very good. I unfortunately didn't write any hand histories down for this tournament. I do have some coming up for the future tournaments, but I remember early on one of the hands I had, I had queens in the big blind, under the gun raises, mid position shoves. I slightly covered the under the gun player. We were only about 30 big blinds effective. I reshoved with queens in the big blind, under the gun snaps me off with kings, and I binked a queen on the river. Beautiful. And that kept me in. And once I won that hand, I really thought, actually, I might make a run in this tournament. I can't really remember how many people entered on my day. I think it was about 1600. They were playing, I think, a, to a certain amount of levels and there was like 60 left on day one and I actually managed to finish day one and I got my first bag, bagging up chips. I'd never bagged chips before in my life. In fact, the $565 buy-in up until that point was the biggest buy-in that I'd actually played in a live tournament setting. I was quite nervous going into it, to be honest, because I really wasn't sure about the standard of players and what they were gonna be like, but as soon as I started playing, I realized that there were no 
better than some of the micro stakes players online, so I felt very comfortable playing. When I bagged my chips at the end, I managed to really mess it up. I put the wrong slip in. For anyone that has been at the World Series of Poker, they know that they give you like three different slips. You're meant to put one in there, you're meant to give one to the dealer, you're meant to keep one for yourself. And I was too excited, I had no idea what I was doing, so I put the wrong slip in, they had to give me another bag. It was a bit, bit of a kerfuffle, but fortunately I got there in the end and they took my chips away and I was super excited to play day two. Day two started with 539 players of the 13,000 or so. I had a friend back home in the UK who was really, really helpful during this tournament series. Shout out to Robin, he was great. Every time I had a seat draw for a day two or, or whatever, he would Google Hendon Mob every single player that I had. We would work out together how many tournaments they'd cashed in, what their kind of biggest cash was, so I could get an idea of the player that I was playing against, whether they were gonna really hold on for money jumps or whether they were gonna be aggressive. So thanks, Robin, that really helped me. After an hour or so of day two, I got moved to a different table and I was sat on the right of Alex Foxen, who has been absolutely beasting tournaments this year. He had a huge stack, like so many chips in front of him. And it was quite intimidating, to be honest, watching him play, like he had a real good composure about himself and was very, very aggressive. Fortunately or unfortunately, I didn't really get in many spots with him because I just didn't get the hands when he had hands, so I didn't have to play against him too much. The day carried on, and unfortunately, I was blinding down quite a lot, didn't pick up any hands. I've actually got a photo of a hand, which I'm gonna be honest with you, I have no idea whether I was in the hand or not. <laughs> I cannot remember, but it looks like on this hand that if I was in the hand, I had pocket fours and I had a straight flush draw on the turn. And I think, to be honest, that was the last photo that I took before the next photo. So I think this was probably my bust out hand. I came in 138th out of 13,070 players in the first tournament, which was around about the top 1% of players or just over. So I was super thrilled. I cashed for $3,754, which was a great start to the trip. What was even better when I got home, my lovely, lovely bag had turned up. So that was two wins in one day. In order to try and keep this as interesting as possible, I'm gonna slightly change location now for part two. All right, part two. The second tournament that I played was the $1,500 six max tournament. Now, this was my biggest tournament up to this day. I figured like, I play a lot of six max online, so I thought I'd be pretty strong in this field, but I also knew that a lot of the higher stakes players would drop down and play this event because it was a great event to play. However, when I sat on my first table, I realized how soft the field was at the World Series of Poker. I didn't have any professional players on my first table. I had five older guys. We were actually all having a pretty good time on the table. They were splashing around chips. I was picking up slowly and chipping up slowly. And then after one of the guys bust, a new guy sat down on my left, which was none other than Joe McKeon, who was the World Series of Poker champion a few years ago. That's when the dynamic of the table started to change. Obviously, as tournaments go on, more of the recreational players get knocked out. It's just left with a tougher field. So as the day went on, my table got a lot, a lot tougher. After my cash in the Colossus, I realized I actually had a pretty good shot at doing well at the World Series this year. So I started writing down a few of my hands. Here's one of the hands that I played against Cho. I was on the button with Ace Queen of Diamonds. I started with around about 86 big blinds. Cho had 44. It was folded to me and I make a standard open. I made it 2.2 big blinds. Cho from the small blind who'd been pretty aggressive up until this point, as you would expect. He three bet me from the small blind to eight big blinds. Big blind folds and I decide to call. I think there's two options here. I think with his stack depth, I could probably four bet get it in against him. But I wanted to take a, the lower variance route and figured I'm in position against him and can play some more streets. Probably not better than him, but we'll see how it goes. The flop comes the queen 10 five with two spades, which is a pretty good flop for me. Joe decides to bet eight big blinds. Now, I probably could raise, get it in here, 
but I'd rather just flat probably go with it on the turn card if it's a safe turn. The turn was a very favorable turn, as Andrew Neamey would say. It was the ace of hearts. Joe checks, and I think this is where I made a mistake. I check behind. I would like a bet there to deny a lot of equity against his spade hands, and obviously any jack or king kills a lot of action on the river. On the river, it was the five of spades, and Joe checks again. At this point now, I definitely want to be going for some value. The pot was 17 big blinds. I bet out nine big blinds. Joe calls. He mucks when I show. So we picked up a nice pot against the world champ. The second hand I played against Joe, which was a great one for me. I open up ace jack suited in mid position off 40 big blinds. Joe in the cutoff decides to rip it in with 16 big blinds. It folds back to me. I don't really think I can fold here in a six max tournament, especially against someone like Joe, who's gonna be very aggressive. So I do make the call. Joe turns over pocket sixes. So we're in a classic race. The flop comes the eight, 10, 10 with two diamonds. The turn is a jack and we're just sweating that six on the river, which didn't come. It was the queen of diamonds. So we pick up a nice pot there and we also knock out a world champ, which was pretty, pretty sweet. Other than that, there wasn't many interesting spots for the rest of day one. I managed to find another bag. So the second bag in two tournaments, I was pretty happy about that. I bagged up 69 big blinds to go on to day two. I really wanted to focus on day two because I realized that I actually had a pretty good shot of making a good score here. So again, I didn't really write that many hand histories down from day two. However, I did have one interesting one against another professional who plays for Solve for Why Academy called Jordan Young. He came over to the table with an entire camera crew, a huge chip stack and was being very aggressive as well. I was quite short stacked at this point, but I'll tell you the hand history anyway. I started the hand with 15 big blinds and I was in the big blind with eight of diamonds, six of diamonds. The under the gun plus one player decides to min raise it to two big blinds. Jordan Young, he flats from the cutoff. Small blind calls. I think I could shove here. I'm not entirely sure. I'm definitely not folding, but I did decide to defend. The flop comes, 10 of spades, 10 of diamonds, and the nine of diamonds. The small blind checks, and then I decided to drill it in. 14 big blinds into a pot of nine big blinds. I figured when I was thinking about the hand that I could probably check shove this hand, but I didn't think I would get many folds against any hands that are betting. If it does go check through on the flop, I probably don't get much fold equity on the turn necessarily if a non-diamond comes. So I did decide to shove. Under the gun player folds. Jordan calls off the 14 bigs. He was a big stack. I think he had 70 big blinds to start the hand and the small blind folds. I was quite shocked to see Jordan had a king of diamonds and a jack of hearts. So he had a gut shot and a backdoor second up flush. Fortunately for me on the turn was the two of diamonds, which left him drawing dead. We picked up that nice pot against Jordan. I'll be interested to see what you guys think about the way I played the hand and whether it's a good call from Jordan. I, I guess when you're that deep stack taking those kind of risks isn't too bad, especially as he probably knows I don't have a 10. So he has 10 outs at least, plus the backdoor draws, but I'm not entirely sure. Maybe I'm just playing tournament poker wrong. Maybe it's a, it is a call, who knows? Let me know what you think. Shortly after that hand with Jordan, he got moved off the table. And the table was pretty good for the rest of the day, apart from having Nick Shawman on my right, who is an absolute beast but he was quite short stack, so he couldn't apply too much pressure on me by three betting me light and things. So I didn't get into any spots with him really. The day approached the end and I somehow managed to find another bag. I'd made day three of the second event that I played. I think there was 27 players left from the 1600 or so that had entered. I was definitely a short stack. I can't remember exactly how many big blinds I had, but I think it was about 15 to 20 big blinds. So there was definitely some work to do on day three. I also made an official one page PDF on the World Series of Poker website, which I was pretty proud of. So I put that up, even though I'm at the bottom, but there you go, whatever. The one thing actually I find hard about the World Series is how intense it is. If you're making day two, day three, I, I can't imagine what it's like in the main. I didn't play the main this year. 
but you normally play for about 12 hours. You get about nine hours off before you're back at the tables again. So you don't really have much time to go home and chill out. You have to go home, go to bed, sleep, get up, have your breakfast and get straight there again. For me, this was quite difficult to get into that grind so early on. And I was pretty exhausted, if I'm being honest, by day three. I'd played a lot of poker in the four or five days. I'd played two days of Colossus, two days of the six max. And now I was on the day three. Early on, on day three, I picked up a six of spades in the big blind. I didn't write this hand history down. I'm just going from the World Series of Poker report. Some short stack shoved. I called it off. I must have had less than 10 big blinds, to be honest. I don't think I'd be calling that wide because I think he was shoving from early position. Anyway, he had ace king, I had ace six of spades, hit flush. All right, that's nice. He was pretty pissed off, obviously. I then didn't really make any hands. Other than that, I was still on like 17, 18 big blinds at this point, so I couldn't really do much until I blinded down to about eight big blinds and I had jack nine of diamonds in mid position. I shoved. Some guy in the small blind decided to flat and then a big stack. Another British guy called Luke, he reshoved, which is great for me. And the small blind decided to fold, so there was extra dead money. He had ace queen off, so I was in a great spot really. I guess I had like 40% or so. Unfortunately, didn't hit a jack, nine diamonds or a straight. And that was me done in 23rd place. I remember getting home after that tournament and my housemate Gazzy wanted to give me a big hug and make sure I was feeling okay, but I was bouncing off the walls. Yeah, okay, there was $380,000 for first place and I was only 22 players away from that, but I'd cashed for around about $15,000 in my second tournament and I was over the moon. It really meant a lot to me this summer going to the series as if you watch my first vlogs, you'll notice that I'm traveling and trying to fund it by playing poker. It's the first time I've ever really done this. I've always sort of been a recreational player, playing quite a lot, but never really went for it full time. I had just cashed for five figures, my first ever five figure score. I'd cashed for four figures in the first tournament. So I'd cashed for nearly $20,000 in two tournaments which I was just over the moon with. So I remember saying to Gazzy, no, no, mate, I, I feel great. I'm, I've got $20,000. I remember going to get my cash and if you cash, I think it is under $5,000, you don't have to sign anything, they just give you the cash over. However, if you cash for over $5,000, you have to get, I can't remember what the number is, like an I, ITN number or something. And I had to have a meeting with some World Series of Poker staff to get this ITN number. Fortunately, being from the UK, we don't have to pay any tax on any gambling earnings, actually. So that felt quite nice, knowing I was going in and not paying any tax. When I was having the meeting with the lady, some other guy came in who had obviously made the Colossus final table and cashed for six figures, three, four hundred thousand. And they were explaining to him that he was going to lose 45 to 50 percent of his earnings to tax. And he was going crazy, like he had no idea this was going to happen. It must have been his first big cash. And I just silently sat there smirking, even though I had, I, he still earned a lot more money than me, but just knowing that having a British passport allows me to not pay tax on poker winnings, which is great. I eventually, after that meeting, got my 15,000 or so dollars. I got my first ever stack of high society, which having watched rounders about a hundred times, I always wanted to own a stack of high society. And I, I actually ran to the toilet when I had this money because anyone that knows me knows that I lose things a lot. I mean, obviously I was gonna do my best not to lose $15,000, but I wanted to get a photo of it before or just in case I did lose it. So I ran to the toilet and the photo that you can see is me just holding this stack of high society in my hand. And I also got a $5,000 Rio chip now, I was quite underwhelmed by the Rio chip, if I'm being honest. It looked pretty dirty and pretty horrible, not something that I was very proud to have, really. So if anyone from the Rio is listening, upgrade your chips. They kind of suck, if I'm being honest. I wasn't even a week into my trip at the World Series at this point. I still had about six or seven tournaments to go. I've also just realized this vlog is going on for absolutely ages. I wanted to tell you about my whole time, but I'm going to have to split this into like two or three parts. So I'm going to end the vlog here or part one here and tell you in the next vlog more about the social stuff that I did in Vegas for anyone that's interested in things to do 
Although I didn't really do that much other than play poker, to be honest, but there are a few things that I did. And I'll cover another tournament that I played, which was the Bounty Tournament. I'll tell you about a crazy Uber driver that I had as well. If you've been to Vegas, you'll know that Vegas has the craziest Uber drivers there ever was. You could make an entire movie about Vegas Uber drivers. But for now, that's the end of part one. If you like the vlog, please click subscribe. Comment down below. Let me know about any of the hand histories, if you'd have played them differently. And I look forward to seeing you in part two. I don't know where you find your energy from. Suddenly you're like, Whoa. I'm an actor, darling. This is what we do. <laughs> we turn on the camera and we just perform.